I want to put something in your spirit that I'm going to come back to in the next couple nights. As we go deep into the word of God and into divine revelation, God is going to change fundamentally on the inside of us the way that we think. And that's going to shift our ability to believe in him. We are entering in very dangerous and exciting days in the world. The days of not knowing the difference between those who are hot-hearted, radical, going after God, and the rest of the church is coming to an end. God is drawing a very distinct line in the spirit. (laughs) It's going to be all out for God or so like the world that you can't tell the difference. We're also going to see the hatred for those who are radically going after God rise exponentially. But be not afraid of that because at the very same time, you're going to see the most radical wave of salvation and revival that any of us have ever experienced. God has not given up on America. I know there's a lot of naysayers that have given up on America, but God has not given up on America. God is looking for a people that will show forth his power. He doesn't need a bunch of good preachers. Oh, my Lord, Jesus. He's got to, listen, it, preaching doesn't impress. Hallelujah. They might, preaching might impress men, but preaching doesn't impress God, and preaching alone is not enough. It's easy to preach today. Come on, it's a whole lot different than it was 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago, when those people had walked with Jesus and saw Jesus, it was one thing for them to stand up and say, Jesus is alive. See, we can say it 2,000 years afterwards, but these people actually saw Jesus. They saw him eat. They saw him sleep. They saw him get tired. And to simply declare that he is actually the son of the living God, and he has conquered death, hell, and the grave, and has been resurrected. They had to have something more than words. I'm telling you, we're back in a day. I thank God for everything that's going on. No, I'm telling you, I thank God it's getting bad. Because we've been so lukewarm and so comfortable in this pseudo-Christianity. Even here in Texas, we call ourselves the Bible Belt. We're, we're the vile belt. Huh? Texas is one of, has the, one of the highest teen pregnancy rates and sex rates of, of young people in the entire nation. It's number two. Hello, somebody. Someone say the devil's a liar. But we've lowered ourselves into sleep. But God is about to raise up a radical people. We're going to be talking very deep in the spirit about the role of miracles and manifestations. But I want to put something as the premise to understand Acts chapter 1, verse 8, because we've got to get something in order here. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. The Bible says, but you shall receive. Somebody help me out here. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And we're going to talk a lot about the power. But I want you to understand, the focus of that verse is not power. The focus of that verse is the Holy Spirit. And as long as we're simply seeking the power, it's going to be limited. The reason we're seeing so little power is because even when we do seek the power, we're seeking the wrong thing. It wasn't the power that we were to seek. It was that relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit isn't a thing. Holy Spirit isn't an it. 
The Holy Spirit isn't a mist or a cloud or a feeling. The Holy Spirit is fully God. He's the third person of the Trinity. And I'm telling you in the name of Jesus, God is going to bring you into a deeper, intimate, personal relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit. And when you get the person of the Holy Spirit, he brings all of his personality along with him. When you get the person of the Holy Spirit, all the manifestations come with him. Hallelujah. It's kind of like inviting Anna Lamoureux to a party. If you invite Anna, you're going to have a party. Anna loves people. She loves to talk to everybody. And if you're not a talker, she'll get you talking. And she is, she is, she's like, she's like, you know, a, a, a ball of energy just waiting to cut loose. And if you invite Anna to come, you are not going to have a quiet, still. Don't invite Anna to a movie if you want to watch it in quiet. Come on, am I telling the truth? All y'all that know Anna, come on. You may have never seen the movie. And she'll be the one, what's going to happen next? What's going on? I don't know. <laughs> she'll be screaming at it, yelling at it, talking to it, laughing, right? She's a blast to have around. So if you invite Anna, and if you simply allow Anna to be Anna, we know what we're going to get. And the only way you're not going to get Anna to be Anna is if you quench her. If you tell her, Anna, now you got to keep quiet. Now that's tough for Anna. You got to keep, I'm not trying to pick on you, I love you. Come on, come on, you're, 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 you're like, you got to, you got to. Not be so excited. That's difficult for Anna. Don't be so happy. Very difficult for Anna. But isn't that what we're doing in our churches today? We, in theory, invite the Holy Spirit to come, but we say, Holy Spirit, don't be what you are. Come on. Don't bring energy, don't bring dynamics. Come on, don't bring devils coming out. Don't bring tongues. Don't bring interpretation. Don't bring prophecy. You can come and bring just a little bit of a goosebump, maybe. Don't bring spontaneous. Don't, don't bring fire that causes people to start running. Don't do it. <laughs> Holy Spirit, come, but we don't really want you to be who you are. Why are you being critical? No, I'm just telling you. You know what happens if you invite Anna all the time and you tell her to be quiet and not do this and not do that? She's going to start feeling a little rejected. And after a while, Anna may just decide she don't want to go. Because if they don't love me for who I am, oh, Lord Jesus. If they're not interested in having me and they want me to be some still, quiet, calm, boring, Someone said the devil's a liar. The focus, whew, when you focus on the manifestations first, there will always be lack. The focus is the person of the Holy Spirit. Someone say, it's him. When the Holy Spirit overtakes you, then you will have unlimited power. I want you to open your Bibles. Oh, my Father God. To Mark chapter 16. I'm praying the Holy Ghost for a moment. Woo, hallelujah. 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 Woo. 
said this on su Sunday morning. I'm going to say it again. T.L. Osborne was quoted as saying, if you can't demonstrate it, you aren't qualified to preach it. Amen. Say this after me. Signs and wonders are our credentials. Let's say it again. Signs and wonders are our credentials. We've got to get a hold of this. We have got to stop looking at the demonstration and manifestation of the supernatural as the candy on top, as something extra and something special that is predominant, predominantly reserved for a select few. Most people, even if they don't admit it in their minds, they have that deep down in their heart, that signs and wonders and operating in them on a continual basis is something that is special, something that is out of the ordinary, something that is an extra and not a vital part of our Christian existence. But God never intended, I'm going to show you in the Word, God never intended for the gospel to ever be preached without a continual manifestation and demonstration of the supernatural. Mark chapter 16. Oh, Lord, help me. i got about 500 scriptures to get through. <laughs> and these signs will follow them who believe. How many believers do we have here? Yeah. That say these signs will follow me. Yeah. Then say you're going to have to chase them. Yeah. Said they're going to follow you. Yeah. Come on, they're going to follow you. Wherever you go, these signs are going to show up. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. <laughs> Woo, someone say new tongues. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Shakara, I'm going to get ready for some new tongues. I say get ready for some new tongues. <laughs> Some of you have been praying in the same old tongue for 30 years, and that's all right. It's been a good tongue. But get ready for some new tongues. I'm just telling you, you're going to have a new language coming out of some of y'all. Boy, I'm messing with y'all tonight. That's all right. That's all right. It's Monday night. We can go a little bit deeper. I, I, got a, I, got, I got about four different major tongues. I got, I got, I got my, my regular tongue, and then I got like this intimate worship tongue, and then I got this warfare tongue. And that my intense warfare tongue sounds like it's Chinese or something. I don't know. But it's got this thing to it. I don't know what. Woo! I can tell uh, when I get into that high-level warfare tongue, look out. They will take up serpents. Not like this snake handler. Talk about demons. <laughs> if they drink any deadly thing, anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. <laughs> they will lay their head. They will, they will lay. Somebody say hands. Ooh, we're going to get there by Wednesday night. Say it again, say hands. There's something about the hands. They will lay their hands on the sick. And they, let's do that word shall. They shall recover. Are you ready? I'm telling you, we're going to get to the day. Oh, my Lord Jesus. I got me ahead of myself already. We're going to get to the day in these end times where everyone you pray for gets healed. You say, well, what if they don't have faith? You're going to have plenty for them. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Stop believing a lie. Well, we don't have to. Well, 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 Brother Steve, not everybody's going to get healed. Not all this, not all that. That's not what my Bible says. He says, I'm going to lay my hands on the sick, and they will recover. And if I'm not seeing that 100% yet, I'm still going to keep pressing in till I get there. Because it's the promise of God. Shakara, my Sunday. 
And I'm telling you something else. We're going to stop being embarrassed about doing it publicly. I remember I was in a, it was invited to a high school to speak. Went to this little Bible study in the high school. Preached on healing. Said, anybody need healing? Come on forward. A couple of kids came forward. Prayed for them right there. Power of God hit them. Power of God healed them right there. Then I had these two girls from a Calvary chapel who, in theory, in doctrine, are spirit-filled. But in practice, they don't do it in public. They came to me afterwards, and they said, how dare? How dare you call them forward and pray for them in front of everybody? Who are you to say that they were going to be healed? They said, we got a young, we got a, a fellow student. He's blind. He comes to the Bible study sometimes. What if he was here today? And what if he came forward? And what if you prayed for him? And what if he didn't get healed? And I said, well, what if he was here today? And what if he did came forward? And what if I prayed for him and his eyes popped open? But, but, but if he didn't, he'd feel bad. I said, I'd rather pray for him and give him a chance to be healed than be so scared like you. Come on, it's time we start calling the spirit of fear what it is. Stop trying to placate fear. Stop placating demons in people's lives. Oh, you shouldn't, you shouldn't speak to people that way. Go read Jesus. Come on, somebody. If Jesus can turn to his closest disciple and said, get thee behind me, Satan. Oh, some of y'all, some of y'all, some of y'all. you comfortable. Come on, first, let's get through these verses. This is just a couple of reminding of 1 Corinthians 2, 4. And my speech and my preaching with the word were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration. Say it in demonstration. demonstration. We saw that word yesterday. Demonstration is convincing proof. Showing off. Paul said, I didn't come to you with enticing words of man's wisdom. But I came to show off the power of God. The spirit of the power. That your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men. But in the power of God. 1 Corinthians 4.20 says this. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Someone say power. power. Say it again, say power. power. See, Jesus' credentials were miracles and manifestations. Yeah. Acts chapter 2, verse 22. Jesus' credentials were miracles and manifestations. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man of attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did through him in your midst. Way you know that Jesus was from the Father is that he did miracles and signs and wonders in your midst. Say, Miracles were Jesus' credentials. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Whew. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit <laughs> and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. Say miracles and manifestations. Were Jesus' credentials. John chapter 10, verse 37. John 10, verse 37 and verse 38. Jesus said, if I do not do the works of my Father, do not believe me. If I do not do the works of my Father, you have no obligation to believe me. Huh? Are y'all hearing me? Someone say the devil's a liar. How do we allow ourselves to be talked in to a powerless gospel or to hide it in a back room somewhere? Jesus put the supernatural on public display. 
Well, we're afraid of freaking people out. That's the spirit of fear of man. It's not of God. Oh, my God, my God, my God, my God. Oh, don't say that because you're going to make, I, I like this preacher. I like that preacher. Hey, thank God for what God has done in them. But if they're denying the power for the sake of crowds, something's wrong. See, you're not going to get in trouble preaching a nice message. You're not going to get in trouble. Just, you're not going to get too much trouble, but you begin to stand up. How many of you remember? <laughs> How many remember Jesus when he began to align himself with God? See, you're not going to get in trouble. They won't get so mad at you. You preach, like I said, a nice little message. But you begin to stand up and say, I've got power to heal the sick. I've got power to cast out devils. Get ready for some trouble. Oh, man, i got to move on. Come on. <laughs> if I do not do the works of my Father, do not believe me. But if I do, though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him, him. We claim to be born again. We claim to be filled with the Spirit. Where's the proof? Come on, somebody, amen. Where's the proof? Miracles and <laughs> I'm just getting to a few verses here already. Miracles and manifestations were the early church's credentials. First Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians 1.5. Now, don't get all upset. I'm preaching this so you can rise it to a new level and realize that miracles and manifestations are not special special uh, add-ons to your Christian life, but they're a core essential part of your Christian existence. And if God set it up that it's a core essential part of your Christian existence, then it's, it's already his will to give them to you. You don't have to beg him for it. You just have to believe him for it. See, as long as the devil can keep in your mind believing that these things are special, then he can keep most of us feeling like we're not worthy or spiritual enough to receive them and to walk in them. But when you begin to recognize that the miracles and manifestations are essential to us fulfilling our purpose, you realize that even though you're still growing in God, God is not holding him back. Is that helping anybody here? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't have to be perfect to move in the supernatural. If you did, there wouldn't be anybody. First Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians 1.5. For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power. Someone say power. power. And in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and in much assurance. Woo. It came in such a demonstration of power of the Holy Spirit that it brought absolute assurance that what we were speaking was true. Romans 5, 18 and 19. Romans 5, 18 and 19. By the way, it's all over the word. Someone say it's all over. <laughs> For I dare not speak of any of those things which Christ has not accomplished through me in word and deed to make the Gentiles obedient in mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about to I, I carry him. I have fully, watch this, because I preached and I worked the miracles, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. I have not fully preached preached the gospel until I manifested it. All right, let me try that over here. Let me try that over here. I have not fully preached the gospel until I manifested it. Let me try that in the middle right here. Let's see. I have not fully preached the gospel until I manifested it. It's easy to stand up and preach. It's another thing to stand up there and produce what you just said. Huh? 
shakara. Somebody say these signs shall follow. Acts chapter 5, verse 12. And through the hands, there it is again, hands, put it in your spirit. And through the hands of the apostles, many, someone say many. Many, many signs and wonders were done among the people. Talking even more than healings. Oh, Lord Jesus. Acts chapter 5, verse 15. You're going to get it. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm going to get it. Say it again, say, I'm going to get it. <laughs> Acts chapter 5, verse 15 and 16. So that they brought the sick out into the streets, laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. Also, a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing sick people. Woo. Hallelujah. That's a commission for you. I come on the rest of this week. That's a commission for you. Come on. Bringing sick people. Bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits. And they were all. Someone say all. They were all healed. Someone say they were all healed. Say it again. Say they were all healed. Glory to God. Acts chapter 19, verse 11. Oh, Acts 19, verse 11. Now God worked unusual miracles by the... Ooh, someone say these hands are miracle-working hands. God, <laughs> God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. So that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick. And the diseases left them. And the evil spirits went out of them. Amen. Say it again. These hands. Amen. Come on, look at them. These hands Amen. are miracle working hands. Miracle working hands. Acts chapter 4. <laughs> Sign. And wonders are your credential. This is heavy. You got someone that says they're full of God, they can't produce the power, don't believe them. When you invite Anna to a party, you're going to get Anna. When you got the Holy Ghost, Signs and wonders and miracles come with him. That's heavy. My Lord Jesus. That's why I quoted it last week. The man of God said, he said 95% that the Holy Spirit left in our churches. 95% of what we're doing today would go on and no one would know the difference. But if the Holy Ghost was removed from the early church, 95% of them, what they did would have ceased and everybody would have known the difference. Because we have lost our true dependency upon the Holy Spirit. We've learned how to do church so well we don't need him to show up. Got a little email from somebody today. They were mad about my Emails I send out because I keep misspelling altar. <laughs> they said it makes you it makes you the church look illiterate. He said in a day when the church is being ridiculed by the world, we don't need it, the church looking illiterate. I sat there and I thought you're hung up on E or A. What's making the church look pathetic is there's no power. 
As a matter of fact, I think God's going to raise up some illiterate, bad spelling, bad speaking people that are, are a little out of shape and don't say the words just right and got some funny looks on their faces so their dependency will not be upon the attractiveness and the skillfulness of men, but solely on the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Turn your neighbor and say that that's good news for you. <laughs> Come on. God said he's going to use, the Bible says he uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wisdom of the wise. Why are we still trying? Why do we keep trying to look like Hollywood stars and like the prim and the proper? God, God's not impressed with that. And winning men over that is not winning men. It's winning them by the power of the Holy Ghost. My God, my God, my shakarabashaha. Shadabo Shande. Shakarama Shande. It doesn't matter your condition that you're in. No, you didn't hear what I said. It doesn't matter the condition you're in. Shaka, shakaraba shande. Just because you had that, that, that thing to go off in your brain, just because it put you in that wheelchair, has not hindered what God can and will and is going to do through you. Shakarama shande. You might not be able to speak the way you used to right now. You're not be able to walk the way you used to. But I'm telling you, there's going to be more power and more miracles and more signs and wonders. Oh, my God, my God. Someone say the devil's a liar. And you are going to get out of that wheelchair. But in the time, meantime. Yeah. How many of you know we're under threats in America right now? Huh? Never seen it like this in my lifetime. Never seen the intensity of the hatred towards God. It's coming from every circle. And the biggest battle we're fighting right now is from within the church. People in the pulpits actually trying to diminish the word of God. Trying to change the word of God. Trying to turn the word of God into a negative. A lot of threats coming. Lawsuits coming. Christians being forced to be involved in gay weddings. Huh? Christians being forced to pay for the abortion pills. Come on, y'all hear me? We keep allowing it to go on. It's only going to get worse. I tell you in the name of Jesus, preachers are going to be are, are getting arrested and are going to be arrested for speaking about sin, about homosexuality. But that's not the end. That's only the beginning. It's all it's gonna keep spreading, 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 but don't you worry about it. Woo! See, the Christians are getting intimidated because they don't understand the greatest weapon God has given you against the fear of man. <laughs> Watch this. Acts chapter 2, verse 28. Now, Lord, look on their threats. And grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. Someone say all boldness. Say it again. Say all boldness. No more getting up on Oprah and whimpering out. Huh? Come on. Amen. No more being afraid to declare, thus saith the Lord. Sin is sin. Stop trying to whitewash it. Boy, I'm, I'm going to get in trouble right now. I said, I'm going to get in trouble right now. They got this movie, Son of God, out there. I went and saw it. Well done. Just missing a couple things. The word repent. And not one time does Jesus deal with anybody having to turn from sin. He said, follow me. But he never says, uh, speaks about the judgment of sin. And as a matter of fact, the only people that call anybody sinners are the religious Pharisees. So the implication is only the religious Pharisees point out sin. Are y'all hearing me? Jesus came preaching, repent for the kingdom of heaven is hand. Well, we don't want to make people uncomfortable. Fine, make them feel good on their way to hell. 
You know why? Because we're well, we're afraid they're gonna mock us. We're afraid they're gonna speak bad about us. We're afraid they're gonna we're gonna afraid. Hey, you need to pray this prayer. Oh Lord, hear their threats. And grant to your servants with all boldness that we may speak your word. How? By stretching out your hand to heal. And that signs and wonders may be done through your name. Come on. When you cast out that first devil, when you see that first blind eye open, when you see those deaf ears pop open, there's a boldness that will come upon you. Somebody's got to help me preach a little bit tonight. Come on. With all boldness, how? By demonstrating and manifesting and backing up what we preach with signs and wonders and miracles. That'll give you boldness. I said, that'll give you boldness. I said, that'll give you boldness. Come on, I said, that'll give you boldness. That'll give you boldness. Shakara Mashande. Shiriande. I remember being down in a large youth meeting down in New Zealand. They turned to me. Youth pastor sat me down. He said, yeah, I know your type. He said, our kids that come here, they're from the street and they're hardened kids. They'll see right through your phoniness. He says, he's like 40 years old, got earrings, piercings all over, tattooed all up. He said, you got to know how to relate to the kids, man. He said, you need to take that suit off. I told you the greatest persecution we're going to receive is from within the church. Sat there bad mouthing me, saying you're just old school and that doesn't work anymore. I got hundreds of kids coming out. I turned to him. We're just getting ready to go out and do the meeting. We're sitting in the back room. I'm ready to preach. He's dumping all this on me. I said, you have no idea who you're talking to. I said, I've got the power of the Holy Ghost on me. I said, I'm going to walk out there in a suit. And I'm going to preach. And you're going to see the greatest release of the power of God you've ever seen in your life. Now, I know some of y'all say, well, he's just a little arrogant. That's because you never had this kind of power. Come on, if Peter could say silver and gold, have I none, but such as I have. I'm not backing down, pretending some false humility. I know I got something. I had an experience in an upper room where flames of fire came and rested upon my head. I got something. And I'm not backing down. And neither are you. I said, neither are you. You got something. You got the power of the Holy Ghost. Get your head up high. Put those shoulders back. You walk with confidence. We are heirs of the kingdom of God. We are kings and priests of the Most High. Come on, I wasn't trying to get his attention on me. Trying to get his attention on the power of God. Walked out there. They put on their little Christian rock concert. I grabbed the microphone. I said, let's sing some worship. Started singing, this is the air I breathe. Got about two minutes into it. All of a sudden, I said, the spirit of God has fallen. Walked around that room. Started pulling kids out. They'd never seen anybody get slain in the spirit. Power of God started hitting these kids. Started hitting the floor. Shaking under the power of God. Weeping and crying. Did that for about five minutes. I gave a three-minute message, gave the altar call. 90% of those kids ran to the altar to give their life to Jesus Christ. And I turned around to the youth pastor in the service, and I said, I told you. Come on, somebody. Come on. Grant to your servants with all boldness. We got to get 
get rid of this American Southern Bell Bible Belt passive pansy Christianity out of our mind. My God, someone say the devil's a liar. That's not the first time I've done it. Won't be the last. Why? Because I was a drug addict and an alcoholic. And May 2nd, 1986, I had an encounter with the Most High God. He set me free. Two days later, baptized me in the Holy Ghost and spoke to me. I've called you to preach my gospel. I got a hold of that word and said, these signs shall follow. And I told God, I said, I'm not doing it without the power. Come on, I remember when he first told me to start my first Bible study. May May, 1st of May, 1988. It was me and two people. And I said, God, I won't do it unless you show up in power every time. Amen. See, some of you just need to get a little bold. Amen. Even in your prayers to God. Amen. Come on, that word ask doesn't mean to plead and beg. Oh, please, pretty please, oh God. That word ask means to make a demand of something that is due. My God, God never intended for you to operate without signs and wonders. He never intended for you to go out there and try to witness without signs and wonders. He never intended for you to go out and preach the good news without signs and wonders. The only reason we're doing without it is because we believe the lie of the enemy. But it's time we begin to make a demand of that which is due. These signs, these, come on, we need some Elisha anointing going on here. We need some people to pick up a mantle and strike the waters and say, where is the Lord God of Elijah? He made a demand. Somebody say, he made a demand. And, whew, verse 31, and when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. Because apparently God didn't like their prayer. And they were all filled. Someone say filled. filled. These people were already filled. But they had to get filled again. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And spoke the word of God with, 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 verse 33, and great, with great power. Someone say great power. Not a little power. Not just a little squeaky power. Not a like, oh, I, I think I kind of felt the presence of God power. Not just get rid of a headache power. Somebody going to get that. Maybe I'm just going to preach to myself the rest of the service tonight. And with great power, the apostles gave, put it in your spirit, gave witness to the resurrection. Stand up and say, Jesus is alive. Come on, that's what we do. We stand up and say, Jesus is alive. We tell the world he's alive, he's coming back again. Now, let me prove it to you. Oh, come on, somebody, come on. Let me prove it to you. Blind eyes be open. Deaf ears get unstopped. Cripples get out of that. Shakara huh? my Sunday. Someone say the devil's a liar. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord. And great Grace, great grace. You want a real grace revolution? That's a great revolution. Signs and wonders and miracles. Not a bunch of carnal people claiming they're going to heaven when they're living like the devil. The impetus of, for boldness is the manifestation of the power of God through your life. 
Woo! <laughs> Acts chapter 15. Can I, can I give you just a little bit more? Yes. Come on, can I give you just a little bit more? Yes. Are, you, are you getting tired? Yes. All right, all right. Woo! Come on. <laughs> Acts chapter 15, verse 6. Now the apostles and elders came together to consider this matter. The matter about whether the Gentiles are, are really going to be a part of the kingdom. And when they had been much dispute, Peter rose up and said to them, let me stop right there. When you're lacking the power, there's going to be a lot of arguments. A lot of doctrinal debates. But Peter was about to put this, and Peter and Paul were about to put this argument to rest. Peter rose up and said to them, men and brethren, you know that a good while ago God chose among us. That by my mouth, the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. So God, who knows the heart, Acknowledge them by giving them the Holy Spirit. Just as he did us. How do you know that what I saw was real? How do you know that what I preach is real? Because you saw the manifestation of the Holy Ghost come on them. <laughs> and he made no distinction between us and them. Purifying their hearts by faith. Now therefore... Why do you test God by putting a yoke on the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved in the same manner as they. Then all the multitude kept silent and listened to Barnabas and Paul declaring how many miracles and wonders God had worked through them among the Gentiles. Why? Because signs and wonders and miracles were their credentials. Yeah. Acts chapter 14. I got I got just a couple, couple, couple. I got lots more. I got a couple more. Whew. Acts 14. Are y'all getting this? Come on. Are you getting this? <laughs> Woo. Man, I feel fire. Now it happened in Iconium, Acts 14, verse 1, that they went together to the synagogue of the Jews and so spoke that a great multitude, both of Jews and of Gentiles, believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brethren. Boy, don't we see that happen. Therefore, they stayed there a long time, speaking boldly in the Lord, who was bearing witness to, their, to the word of his grace, granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. And behold, the multitude of the city was divided. Part sided with the Jews, part sided with the apostles. You're going to move in the supernatural. Get ready for some serious warfare. Huh? Don't you think everybody's going to love you? Don't you think everybody's going to agree with you? Don't you think if you got nothing but peace around you, you probably got no power? I am going to say that again because that's good. Come on. I'm saying, if you got nothing but peace around you, you probably got no power. Everywhere Jesus went, it's turned it up. Everywhere Jesus went, why? Because it's one thing to say it, but when you can prove it. And there will be people that you'll prove it in front of, and they'll still reject God. And they'll still call it something else. And they'll still say it's bills above. And they'll still call it, every, and then try to reject it. Don't you worry about it. It's not your job to convince them. It's just your job to demonstrate the proof. Yeah. 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 Woo! 
Magarabashande, Shakaramashande. Someone lift your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Shakaramamama Kakande, Shikaramamama Kakamoshande, Shiriandarabakandarabashande. Come on, a little deeper. Come on, Coco bo 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 shande. Makara ma shande. Shakara ma shande. Put it in your spirit. Put it in your spirit. Signs and wonders are your credential. God never intended for you and me to do this without the supernatural. And God never intended for the supernatural to be limited to a special few. Come on, he's not looking. He'll always have his generals, but he's not looking for superstars. That's why the devil's had a heyday. Because we get a few people that have learned, gotten to breakthrough. And they move in such power. So the devil only has a few targets he's got to take out to try to discredit the miracle ministry. Come on, amen. But what is the devil going to do when we got a million born-again, spirit-filled believers in North America moving in signs and wonders? He can't take you all out. <laughs> hey, shakande. When you're going into the highways and byways, when you're going into the workplaces and you're going down in the street corner and you're going into the Walmart and you're going into the neighborhoods. Well, you, don't have to, and you don't have to do it with such splash and you don't have to do it with some charisma. I'm a charismatic personality. I'm going to do it with a lot of panache. Come on, hey man. But you can be, you can be God's secret weapon. I remember when Pastor Benjamin was just a little boy, seven years old, took him to New Zealand with me. He got up in the altar, started praying for people. They're all looking up like this. He was so short, he couldn't touch their head. He'd just walk up and touch their stomach. As soon as he touched them, power got to hit him. They didn't even know what happened. They're like, whoa, what happened? Where'd that come from? God's little secret weapon. Karamashakahande. And I'm not talking just a few miracles. We're talking mighty signs and wonders. Listen, Hebrews 2. Woo. <laughs> Hebrews 2. Lord Jesus, it's all over the word. Chapter, chapter 2, verse 3. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. Say God bearing witness. Say it again. Say God bearing witness. Time you be begin to just know that God is going to bear witness. Karamashahande. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Look at your hands. Say these hands are miracle working hands. Say it again. Say, these hands are miracle-working hands. Lord, if you come, listen. Woo. 
Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Just go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost for a moment. I just got to pause right here.